thanks to Cocolicious VCO for sponsoring this episode. Hello and welcome to Trenta, 30-something conversations with 30-somethings and the 30-something else. We are back from a week-long break and on to our quote-unquote season two of the podcast. And to open this new season, I've invited one of my good friends who is a relatively new dad to talk about parenthood and what it's like to raise a kid in these unprecedented times. So without further ado, please welcome Meg Sagayadan. Hello. Hi, Paige. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for, thanks for accepting my invitation. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. So before we begin, may I ask for your ASL? Oh, my age, sex, location? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Old school, uh, right? Uh, 34 years old, obviously a male. Mm-hmm. Uh, I live in Merville, Paranaque. All right. All right. Thank you. So, first off, yeah, how are you, Cheng and baby Mira? We're good. Um, like everybody else, we're trying to get by. Um, these are difficult times, but you know, there's an advantage to going through it as a family. Um, right. Just on your own. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'd like to think that we're doing okay. Great. So far, so good. So how many years have you been married na nga? Diba that was, what year was that? 20? 16. So four 20, years. Yeah. Four years. Yes. And then Mira was born just last year, right? Yes. March 30. So how's 20. that like being, both you and Cheng are lawyers, working Working mom and dad, how is that like post? Uh, sorry, pre-COVID, what was the schedule like? Um, well, at first it was I would say manageable since our, our maternity laws here are quite forgiving. So mm-hmm. um, the moms are given, I guess, sufficient number of days to take a leave. The dads will. But previously, they had seven days, but they could borrow an extra week from the mom. So during that time, it was it was okay. I mean, we, we had an excuse not to be at work. So it was 24-7 with a baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, then when our leaves uh, were over and it was back to work, um, it was a period of adjustment. Um, obviously, we needed a yaya. I think it was... Uh, our yaya's presence was indispensable, mm-hmm. since as lawyers, you know that you know, most of the day we're at the office, and since we live in Paranaque, and it's very traffic if you don't get out by maybe 6 a.m., Yeah. Um, so we do need to leave the house early. That means we, there are times that we leave the house and the baby is still asleep, and you know, uh, the yaya is in charge of the baby, and by the time we get back, that's around 7 p.m., maybe 8 p.m., the baby is either um, groggy because she's about to sleep mm. or she's already sleeping. And in the lucky chance that she's still awake, we probably have an hour because mm-hmm. she usually sleeps at around 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. to play with her, right? Oh. So it's a very limited window. Mm-hmm. And it's just a matter of living with the fact that it comes with I guess the profession, you could say. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's a period of it's a big period of adjustment pre-COVID. Both of your in-house counsel, right? Would you say that the schedule is much more forgiving than would would you imagine yourselves being in a law firm in that setup with that kind of schedule, or being in-house was you know a welcome change? Um. There are a lot of points to discuss with respect mm. to change, but um, sure as far as schedule is concerned, it's uh, on a case-to-case basis. Uh-huh. Uh, for Cheng's part, she's in the banking industry. Um, I would say that the schedule for her hardly ever changed. Mm. Still works long hours. She still works beyond the 9 to 5. And there are a lot of times that I get home earlier than her um, even 
siguro mga 9 p.m., 10 p.m., she's sometimes still in the office. Uh, from my end, schedule-wise, I think it's a big change. Mm-hmm. Um, I work in the power industry, um, and it's strictly 9 to 5. Um, in fact, um, when the clock hits 5, my, my boss tells me to leave. Right? Mm-hmm. And I have to follow um, his command. Um, so that's schedule-wise. Yeah. Um, work-wise, it's different as well. Um, as you know, when you're, when you're in a firm, you're either in general practice or you're in, in your chosen field, whether it's education, tax, labor, etc. But in a company, um, that also depends. Um, in a company, it's like working for a single client. So you only have to um, take into consideration that company's interest. Um, and then in my case, since it's power, it's very specialized. So mm-hmm. all of well, majority of the queries or my tasks are all involving energy in one way or another. So whether it's litigation or corporate practice, there's always going to be an element of energy. So it's mm-hmm. a different dynamic altogether with respect to the in-house practice. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you're right. It's, it's very different from law firm practice. I see. So you guys were ma- are married four years, and then Mira came just last year. What the, the during the time in between getting married and having a kid? Was there any pressure that you felt to have a kid right away, or did you guys talk about it? Now you wanted a bit more time for yourselves before having the baby. Well, yes, to both. Um, I think the pressure. Um, especially in the Philippine setting, is somewhat, you know, customary. Uh-huh. Uh, when people get married, it's all, well, I would say, downhill from there, as far as pressure is concerned. And it's mainly coming from the parents, right? Because you know, after marriage, they now expect you to, you know, um, have children. But, of course, it's not always aligned with what um, your spouse uh, your, your spouse wants. Mm-hmm. Uh, in our case, yeah, there was a lot of pressure coming from both sides. But at the same time, we both came in agreement as to the timeline mm-hmm. uh, of when we'll have a child. And that depended on a lot of factors like, um, of course, mental readiness, yeah. financial readiness. So when we ticked off those boxes, we knew that it was time. Oh. That was the only time. We, we didn't give in to any pressure at all. Oh, that's good to hear. I remember the first time you shared with me that you guys were expecting, but that was on a business trip you had here in Cebu. I think that was like around 2018, mga mid-2018 or late-2018. And then we also had a conversation around mid-last year naman when you shared how fatherhood changes everything talaga, your priorities especially. So after more than a year of being a dad, what have you discovered about yourself? Um, I think a lot of dads will agree with me that they will discover that they have a lot of patience in them. Oh. Um, at the start, it doesn't seem apparent, but when it's necessitated, it just comes out like, um, yeah, I never realized that I had so much patience in me. Mm-hmm. Um, secondly, um, I guess being responsible. Dads don't have a choice but to be responsible. Um, everything is different. You're no longer looking for yourself. Mm-hmm. You're trying to raise a kid. You're trying to raise a family. So all your actions are always calculated, right? The uh, first mm-hmm. question I ask is, would it give a better life to your family? It's self-centered anymore. And a practical example of that is you know, when I was still single um, and there was work, um, there mm-hmm. were times you could just um, be on SL if you don't feel like going to work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, now that you have a family, that almost never happens. Mm. So much um, is at stake with a single day of absence and sayang, di ba? Right. So that's a practical example of it. So 
patience and responsibility. Uh, what about the changes, some of the major changes that came with being a dad? Changes in lifestyle, if any. Uh, where can I start? Like you said, yeah, everything changes. Definitely it's a lifestyle. Um, of course, you have to be more careful with how you spend your money. Right. Uh, you always have to plan a million steps ahead. Um, for instance, just a trip to the mall. I mean, pre-COVID mm. necessitate a lot of planning. Um, for one, the diaper bag has many components. Uh, yeah. um, and has a checklist of what the yaya and she has to pack. So uh -huh. preparation goes a long way. Um, what else? Yeah, so every everything that you do is centered on the baby, mm -hmm. on the interest of the baby. And now you can't just spend recklessly. You have to um, plan ahead, not only financially, but also in other aspects as well. So I would yeah. say those are the big changes. Mm -hmm. As a, you both are millennial parents, would you say... Are we? You guys are. You still are. Diba? Uh, theologically, yes. Yeah, diba? Yep. What's your parenting style like? Are you hands-on? Are you not as strict? Who's the, who's the disciplinarian? Who's the... Who's the, I know, who's the one who gives way to Mira? Who spoils her more? Yeah, um, we're very hands-on, both of us. But in terms of parenting style, I'm the good cop. Cheng is the bad cop. Oh, so talaga? I'm the, yep. I'm the enabler. I'm the spoiler. <laughs> I will allow extra scoops of ice cream, maybe extra bites of chocolate, and Aww. she will produce me. So, yeah, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, I don't think the roles change for, for some times, but, yeah, it's pretty much like that. Mm -hmm. but I think it's, an, it's natural eh, um, that the roles are arranged like that, especially if the setting is uh, your first kid is a daughter. A daughter. Mm -hmm. It's usually the daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. The daddy is usually the spoiler in that arrangement. <laughs> Speaking of the many changes that came with being a parent, what have been the adjustments and probably the challenges of parenting in the middle of this pandemic? Yeah. Um, so many adjustments again. Um, first off, uh, of course, you can't bring the baby out. Um, right. What's sad about it is that yeah, uh, Mira is approaching the age where you would typically uh, enroll your kid to a preschool mm -hmm. that's 1.6 to 2. And um, we're getting slightly worried because by the time that she's 1.6 and we're still in the middle of the pandemic, um, she won't be in a preschool where, where she'll develop her um, interpersonal skills, you know, yeah. be with her peers. Uh, so that's one, but regardless, since we own a preschool and online classes have started, um, silent kids Mira with some of the classes. Ah, and, yep, silent kids siya. and so I would say that she's used to the online setting already. Mm -hmm. uh, she participates with the songs, uh, with the questions, although most of the time she's muted. <laughs> yeah. And so when they ask her to spell her name, you know, sometimes she doesn't spell her name. So mm -hmm. it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough in that sense. The only time that Mira goes out of the house is when we go to the pedia for mm -hmm. the monthly um, checkup. Right. And that's also worrisome as well. Uh, of course, there will be exposure um, she would have to wear a mask, um, and Samira, she doesn't want to wear a mask. Uh -huh. So we bought her this little hat that had a plastic cover. Uh -huh. um, 
So, you know, sometimes she keeps it on, sometimes she doesn't. Hmm. Uh, it's all um, very planned and calculated. Like, yeah. uh, there's an appointment, we have to be there sharp. We have to be out of there sharp. Um, since the clinic is in Taguig, like the next to Uptown Mall, mm-hmm. the only exposure is in the basement of the mall, going to the parking lot. And that's it, right? You want to limit the exposure of the kid outside because, you know, they said yeah. it's airborne already. So, yeah, it's tough. So, no exposure outside. And then you also have this problem on schooling. And yeah. this, I guess most parents can relate to this mm-hmm. sentiment, right? Speaking of exposure, a different type of exposure naman siguro is exposure to their gadgets, diba? Because now it's it's kind of like a necessity. Screen time is a necessity. Does she have a scheduled screen time for play? And do you minus it from the time she spends for school? Meron bang ganong dynamic? <laughs> yeah, actually that's a very interesting question because... Um, my parents, who own a preschool, uh-huh. they belong to the traditional school. Yeah. And when my sister gave birth to her son, um, he grew up not having any gadgets. Ah. Even, if, even if his friends had their own iPads, mm-hmm. uh, see, Lucas is his name. Lucas would not be allowed near any iPad or any cell phone. And he grew up fine. In fact, mm-hmm. he's... Um, smarter than most of the students in his class. So we kind of assumed the same mentality and we were the no gadgets type. Uh But it's easier said than done since um, I don't think the pandemic has helped uh, Mm -hmm. us keep that sentiment. Um, So we've practically gone from being a no gadgets type of parenting to maybe some like a regulated um, form of, of gadgeting. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, Mira now has a schedule whenever she can watch um, well, Simon TV. Eh? It's either TV or uh, iPad. She usually watches Dave and Ava or Elmo's World. Um, she can only watch during lunchtime. Ah, okay. And other than that, if you know, we've tried everything and we were not able to pacify her. Exceptionally, she can watch for maybe 15 minutes. Mm. Regulated like that. And the Yaya, well, ideally, the Yaya can't make her watch without us knowing. I see. Yeah. So that's how we, how we limit her, her use of the gadgets. I'm curious, how long are the classes that she attends online? Um, they run for an hour. Mm, okay. um, but unfortunately, because for her, it's uh, it's at 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. It's right smack in the middle of her morning nap time. Uh. Uh, so at first, she would be groggy. Mm. But it would force her to finish the class so that she would get used to it. Uh-huh. And yeah, eventually, she would complete the full hour uh, without you know cutting cutting the class in half to, to sleep. Mm-hmm. So it's all a matter of getting used to. Yeah. So all this time during quarantine, have you consciously made an effort to give her a schedule? Yeah. Um, she does have a structure in her day. Um, she usually wakes up at around 6 a.m., believe it or mm-hmm. not. Um, then she plays from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Um, sometimes in the playground of the preschool, since it's empty anyway. Uh, then the bath um, goes to her 9:30 to 10:30 class. Um, takes a nap, sleeps until lunchtime. Hmm. Takes her lunch, and then from 12 to 3, laro ulit, and then 4 to 6, tulog ulit, and then finally 6 to 8 is yeah, awake time again. So it's something like that, but. Uh, it's weird because the biological clocks of children are really accurate. They hardly mm-hmm. ever change. So we don't really have a problem following her, her, her schedule. Cool. Yeah. So are you taking what, notes, Paige? Kidding. Yeah, I am taking notes, in fairness. <laughs> for the future. Mental notes. For my, for my nephew for now. 
What about, what naman are the good things you think this pandemic has brought, especially for a working parent like you guys? Okay. Um, it's a good question. And a loaded one. Um, for a working parent, uh, for the first two months, we went from saying that you know, work from home is the bomb. And then uh. after that, from the third <laughs> month to the present time, we've all realized that it's it's worse, right? Mm. It's worse than physical work. Um, I guess the realization there is that, you know, um, there's gratitude with the fact that you're still able to go to work. Yeah. Um, so you're thankful for for work, even if sometimes it stresses you out because of the work from home arrangement. Um, another good thing about it is that you know, for sure, there would be good habits that would come out of the pandemic. Um, mm. From my end, if I would name the most important, it would be meditation. Oh, you've been practicing meditation. I've been practicing uh, for about eight months now. I started before the pandemic. And then ah. During the pandemic, I was able to make it a regular habit without skipping a day. So nice. Maybe I skipped four days all in all, but hmm. yeah, uh, I'm just glad I, I came across the habit and I'm able to maintain it. So yeah, good habits. And then, of course, time spent with the family. Right. Time spent with the family, with your parents, you get to have these conversations that you would normally not have. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time you're preoccupied with work and you know, other stuff about life. And it's in these dull moments that you suddenly have meaningful conversations with your parents and you really are able to check um, check how, how they are, how they're managing. Because um, they're not gr me, growing any younger. Yep, they're not. They're not. Uh, from my end, since I'm still living with my parents, I I try to shoulder most of the expenses, even the vaccines of my parents. Mm. Um, yeah, so time spent with family, and lastly, um, time spent for yourself. I think the most important part of the pandemic is really just <clears throat> um, sitting down, um, making these realizations of what your plans are in life, whether you're happy where you are or whether you need to recalibrate or tweak your plans. And you know, that's time that it wasn't available about before so this true. pandemic happened. So true. And yeah, I think those are the silver linings during the pandemic. And, yeah. I'm sure as a parent also, like you guys had a routine. Like on weekends, maybe you, do, you go to the mall Pre-COVID, uh, you go, you'd go to the mall or have road trips or you'd travel or you'd have travel plans. What are the things you look forward to doing again after all this is over? Everything. <laughs> uh, no, Chang and I came across this good project in Pinterest, if I'm not mistaken. We have a glass box and then uh, each of us is free to write on a piece of paper whatever they want to do after the pandemic, whatever they want to eat. So there are no rules. I mean, you can write anything. Ah. Just fold it up, put it in that glass box. Yeah. And you know, when the pandemic is over, you can open the box together and decide what you want to pursue, right? Well, that's nice. So our, our glass box now has so many papers in it. Um, and it's mostly places that we want to see. Mm. Um, and food that we want to eat um, but you know at the end of the day what we look forward to is taking our daughter to other places yeah even a local beach would be so satisfying at the moment um, she loves the sand she loves the water but oh. unfortunately the sand that we have here is fake sand and water is just you know a bit of water oh. <laughs> Or water that that's used to bathe her, but yeah, uh, it's just taking her out of town. Yeah. Um, even if 
it's just nearby. I think that's something to look forward to. Simple, simple plans, really. True. So Mira's not yet in school. I mean, not in formal school yet. And she's just a little over a year old. I would probably not even remember this time. But in closing, what would be the story you'd tell her about this whole experience? That's a very good question. What did I tell her? I wouldn't say it was, you know, uh, a dark year or a dark mm -hmm. moment. I would say it's a period of resilience, period right. of adjustment. So that's how I want to paint it. That's how I want to paint this narrative that it was a challenging time, but what mattered most uh, was that people were able to muster through it thrive despite the pandemic and i think that's what we filipinos are really known for mm -hmm. whatever, whatever hurdles there may be i think there's always a way out of it so yeah i think by telling that story there would be a lesson out of that as well mm -hmm. Aww. last question or perhaps a question yes, are, you, are you guys are you guys planning to have any kids soon soon after any more kids after this or parang Wait it out, Muna. Yeah. Remember when you asked in the first few questions whether there was any pressure? Mm. That's, yeah, that's what I was describing. The pressure is successive, right? After marrying, when's your first kid? Then when's your next kid? Yeah. So, yeah, we do have plans to have more kids. <laughs> I'm Cheng at there. Hi, Cheng. <laughs> she hides back. Um, yeah, but um, I would love to have maybe f at least two or three more. Mm -hmm. But I know that Cheng will settle for one more. Aww. Yeah, I need to have a boy. Yep. All right. Okay, two more now. Two more now as a compromise. Oh, ba? Why not? Uh, Why don't I ask you? Eh, hindi ko pa alam. Okay. Eh. Or do you hypothetically want to have? I really don't know yet. We're we're busy with our nephew right now who's so I think he's so spoiled, so yeah. We're we're happy with him for now. Is taking care of your nephew making you want to have one? Okay lang rin naman. Oo, naman. Okay lang. Yeah. Kasi I can't as in napapagod ako once a week pa lang siya natutulog with me. Like every day, ba? <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Parang I guess, I guess, anarin, it's it's true nga what they say na as parents, even if I'm not yet a parent, na when you see your kid, even if you're so tired, all the, all the, all the pagod goes away. Diba? Parang ganun. Parang, yeah. no matter Am how, I... yeah, yeah. So yun. We can never overemphasize how exhausting being a parent is, especially for the first few months. But it's also equally true that, you know, when you get to play with your kid and get to witness how your kid grows. Yeah, the miles. Uh, it's, so fulfilling. it's so fulfilling and so meaningful that everything becomes worth it. Everything makes sense. Um, I, for a fact, appreciate that through the work from home, um, whenever I am asked to do something and it turns out to be very difficult, very challenging, Mm. Uh, you know, after those kinds of tasks, I would immediately go to Mira Aww. just to, you know, unburden myself, just to clear my mind, clear my head. And for sure, after that short trip to the next room, when I come back in front of my laptop, I'm good to go again. Recharged Colette. Yep. Aww. Thanks so much, Migs, for your time. I know it's no easy feat. <laughs> especially these days. No? So shout out to all the parents, to you and Cheng, and to all the parents of young kids, especially who have made so many adjustments these past few months, as in like hats off to you guys. So yeah, I'll just stop recording, but we can still chica after. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks to Cocolicious VCO for partnering with us again on season two of Trenta. Pal of the Cocolicious team is back for VCO Knowledge Corner to give us tips on how to store your Cocolicious VCO. Welcome back, Paolo. Hey, Paige. Great to be back in season two. All right. So 
my first question would be, what's the proper way to store VCO? All right. So the proper way to store it is, of course, number one, to keep it away from sunlight. Uh, just store it at room temperature. And always remember to keep the bottle or the jar closed. All right. So it has to be tightly closed. Yeah, right? yeah. So not So no air goes in. My second question would be, does pure coconut oil turn into solid when the temperature cools? Right, so you know that your virgin coconut oil is virgin if it does solidify. So pure coconut oil changes from liquid to solid at around 24 to 26 degrees Celsius or 74 to 76 degrees Fahrenheit. This appearance at said temperature is one proof, again, that the coconut oil you have is pure and unadulterated. So that's a quick test yes, to exactly. find out if your VCO is really virgin. Exactly. So if it doesn't solidify, it's just coconut oil and it's been touched. I see. <laughs> How do I make my solid coconut oil liquid? Okay, so if it does solidify, you don't have to worry. The easiest way to do this is to um, put a small amount of warm water in a bowl and then just submerge your uh, VCO there. Okay, so it's how long does that take usually? Well, or maybe around 5 to 10 minutes depending how hot the water is. But it will naturally uh, li liquefy again. I see. What about the other way around? How do I make my liquid coconut oil into a solid? And what can I use with that solid VCO? Alright, so a creative way of using the VCO is applying it topically. So if you want a sort of creamy touch to it and not oily, what you can do is you can just leave it in the fridge for let's say 30 minutes to an hour, and then it will solidify. All right. Thanks for those tips, Paolo. We'll see you again in the next one for our last segment of VCO Knowledge Corner. Thanks, Paige. See you guys next time.